I take that curve a little too fast and the kids yell, woo! And I'm thinking, wait a minute, we're not there yet. The adults, however, had a very different reaction. Christine, you need to slow it down. So sometimes you get an indication that's real clear when you're going too fast or too slow. Wouldn't it be nice when you're doing a public speaking event that you know exactly how the audience is tracking with your presentation? Stick around, we're gonna talk about that. I'm Christine Harper. And I'm Ernie Davis. And we're here from Powerhouse Motivations. Motivations. So today we're gonna to talk about tempo, that rhythm, that flow, the pace that you use to speak. What is tempo to you, Mr. Davis? So when I think of tempo, it always reminds me of a story. Christine, you know I love stories. You know I love stories. And this one reminds me of my daughter when she was young. You know, when she was just a little kid, we used to watch this show on Nickelodeon called The Proud Family. Penny Proud on The Proud Family, awesome show. And she was a little girl, had a little family on there, and she had a best friend. And Penny Proud's best friend would always come into the room. And as you know, and you've probably seen a show like this, you may have had a friend like this. And I think there's another one like the Urkel, the Steve Urkel show. But this, her friend comes into the room, and she starts speaking. And she says, yada, 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 and she's speaking so fast that nobody can understand a word that she says. And then the other little friend comes in as a little boy, and this one, he speaks extremely slow, and he speaks so slow that everybody is completing his sentences. And so when I think of tempo, I always think of those two cartoon situations. You know, the pace at which you're speaking and presenting your presentation. Are you going really, really fast, or are you going really, really slow? I remember one time I was evaluating someone who was, happened to be my mentor, Mr. Tony Bass, uh, and he's telling a story and it's interesting. And at times he stopped and he'd look to the left or the right. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, is he okay? Why is he stopping? Yeah. And then he keep going. He bring us, you know, and everyone is, is with him. And I'm leaning in because I want to hear what's going to happen. Yeah. And then when it was my turn to do the evaluation, I said, Oh, Mr. Bass, you have become the master of the pause. Ooh, I like that. I like that. You know, that was excellent. I remember Mr. Tony Bass. I remember Tony. Tony was an awesome guy. He was an awesome guy. And I think you, I like the way you said that. And if, you know, guys, I, I love to give you guys tips and pointers. And so here, here it is. I'm going to give the number, I'm going to go back and give you the number one tip and pointer. You may want to write this down. You may want to press the like button right now and write this down. Press like and write this down. You have to come to the realization and understand that your voice will have an impact on the audience. You see, you're going to be a great speaker. You can be an awesome speaker. But the first thing you have to come to the realization is you have to understand that your voice will have an impact on the audience. Write it down, press like, and remember that because your audience will, your, your voice will determine how your audience responds. Mm -hmm. You speak too slow, people will start to look at you as if something's wrong, they'll start to ask questions and they may just think that, hey, maybe you're just a little slow. You speak too fast and they may start to think that maybe you're an upstate New Yorker. <laughs> maybe you're like one of my favorites, like Miss Christine Harper from, what, what part of New York are you from there, Christine? From Brooklyn. From yeah, Brooklyn. Tell, us about that. tell us about that Brooklyn accent, I love that. <laughs> it's funny because my accent is a combination of Brooklyn and the Bronx because I spent a lot of time in both places. But it's interesting how when I moved away from New York to live in, in Pennsylvania, That's you, Christine. people tend to speak much slower. You trying to tell us that you had one of those accents, that you were a fast talking New York girl? Is that what you're trying to tell us? <laughs> fast talking, fast walking, that's how it used to be. <laughs> but I learned to modulate my voice and I learned to speak in a way that, that my listeners could keep up, hear me, understand me, and also, in a sense, lean in and want to hear more. So hold on, Christine, you got to tell us, how did you do that? How did you get people to actually listen and lean in and engage with you? How did you do that? Because that's a big transition. How did you do that? I was in college. I did take some public speaking classes. 
-hmm. and the instructor pointed certain things out about us slowing down, about us reading the audience Mm -hmm. and actually using your voice, using the power of your voice, because each of us has a unique sound, but using the voice to keep people engaged and not to drive people away. You know, you're so lucky. You're so lucky that you have to take a a public speaking class in college. I I don't think there's anything as great as being able to actually have some, some real feedback, you know, being able to get that feedback, being able to have someone who tells you, you know, that your voice will have an impact on, on, the, on the audience and helping you to really understand what that means, you know, and then someone who can tell you to, to pause occasionally. You know, yeah. all over the years, I've been evaluating speakers all around the world. I've, been, I've evaluated seasoned speakers, people who've been speaking for years. I've evaluated speakers who are just getting started and I've helped to train and develop speakers who, who are just getting started. And you know, one of the things that I have noticed is that some speakers, they speak fast. And they're not from New York. <laughs> they're not from New York. They're not from up north. They're, they're not even from, they're, they're from all over the place. And some, sometimes it's just that nervousness. You know, they, you stand up mm-hmm. on the stage or in front of a crowd mm-hmm. and you don't want to get your entire message out. You just want to say everything. And sometimes, you know, I'm looking at them and they're holding a piece of paper and they're trying to read it all. They're trying to get the entire thing out. And sometimes when they're not using their notes, they forget some words and they're speaking so fast that they, their mind and their mouth, they, they don't keep in sync with each other. And then they're, they're saying, oh my goodness, I need to go back and I need to say something. And they're trying to share everything that they have. You know, so it's, it's awesome to have a, a, a mentor or a coach or an instructor who can actually walk you through this process. And, you know, I, I think if there was another point that we had to share here, I would probably say, let me see if I remember, Christine. I think the first point was understand that your voice will have an impact on the audience. Number two, it was pause occasionally and learn to master the pause like Mr. Tony Bass. Now, number three, I don't know if we, if we covered number three very well, but number three, I would say, you know, show some emotion. Show some emotion and conviction and talk as if you're talking to old friends. You know, uh, Chris- absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's something about that. You, you're talking, you mentioned a few seconds ago about people rushing through their speech. You're talking and for some reason you think, oh, this guy has got to go. He, he's mm-hmm. only got three minutes left. I better hurry up and say everything I need to say so that he'll sign this contract. Mm-hmm. Not a good look. When the timer holds the sign up and says you've got two minutes left, don't yeah. think that that means you should now rush through every single point you had on your piece of paper mm-hmm. because that's not necessarily effective. When you're speaking, you want to be effective. You want to give the high points. Mm-hmm. You want to give explanation where explanation is needed, but usually we over prepare and we have more information in front of us than we need to actually say. Yeah, you know, it's so crazy, right? Because you could follow the first three steps that we say it, right? You understood that, you know, your voice is going to have an impact until you're fluctuating your voice, you know, and then you're pausing occasionally. You're trying to master that thing like Mr. Tony Bass. And then you're doing that third thing. You're showing some emotion. Mm-hmm. But again, what I've noticed, usually when you're speaking in a, an organization or you're speaking on a stage and someone actually holds up that timing card, like Christine just said, the, your natural inclination because you've prepared and you've prepared, your natural inclination is to try to spit out every word. And now you start to go faster and faster and faster. And you just want to get all the information out in the time allotted. Here's what I want you to remember. Christine, you reminded me of this when you said that. And it's my favorite quote, my favorite quote. And if we had to get, if there there was a fourth point, if I could give a fourth point today, it would be this. It would be from Miss Maya Angelou. And Miss Maya Angelou is one of my favorites. And she says, remember folks, At the end of the day, people, they won't remember everything that you said. They won't remember everything that you did. But they'll always remember how you made them feel. So if you want to have an impact, you want to have a lasting impact, make them feel good. Speak to them as if they're a friend. Put some emotion and energy into it. If you're happy, be happy. Speak up. If you're sad, be sad. Speak sad. But put a little bit of put a little bit of energy and emotion into it. 
make them feel like you wanted them to be there to listen to you and that the relationship will continue. Awesome. Awesome. And if you do that, hey, you're going to have an awesome presentation. You're going to say, hey, thank you, Christine. Thank you, Ernie. And listen, you can thank us right now by go ahead, click the link. The like button below. Click the like button below. Hey, there's a special link. If you're interested, we have we have upcoming. We have a, what we call an Aspiring Speakers Mastermind Group. And we'd love to have you as a participant, as a member of the Aspiring Speakers Mastermind Group. So that link right there will take you to the webpage, the homepage for the Aspiring Speakers Mastermind Group, where you can get a little bit more information. You can sign up. You can join me and Christine, where we actually, we don't just talk about it. We actually do it. We actually exchange and you get an opportunity to engage with several friends and we get to share some speaking and we get to grow a whole lot. It's going to be fun, Miss Harper. But hey, I guess that's it for this week, huh? That's it. Thank that's you it. for being with us. See you next, next time. Week. Awesome. See you next time. <laughs>